Hi, welcome to another edition of The Local Perspective. I'm Jerry DeShane, the Executive Director of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to talk about arts in the community, <coughs> and more than that, we're going to talk about the creative economy. What's it mean? That's, you know, is this just painting murals on walls? My guest today is one of my favorite people, one of the most fun people, and she's laughing because we just spent the last <coughs> half hour talking about really depressing stuff. <laughs> And I made her promise we're not going there. Nope, nope, we won't. I promise. <laughs> My guest is Ann Katz. Ann is the Executive Director of Arts Wisconsin. Thank you for being here on The Local Perspective. Glad to be here. It's, I, I can't believe we haven't had one of these conversations yet. <laughs> well, this is the first of many, I'm sure. Or the last. Or maybe the last. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, Jerry. <laughs> but uh, creative economy. Um, let's, let's jump into it right away. What are we talking about here? <laughs> You know, in some ways, we are making this up as we go along. We're yes, kind of build, I'm good at that. We're kind of building the car as we drive it. Really, the creative economy is the economy we have now. We're not in a recession anymore. I think everybody can agree on that. We are in an economy that is much more based on creativity, imagination, entrepreneurship, and, um, and all the things that go into quality of life. And so... Yes, that's about the arts, and the arts are a huge part of the economic structure of this state and the country. Uh, we're also talking about how creativity is infused in every other sector. So science, uh, math, um, engineering, um, manufacturing, every economy now, every sector of the economy has to depend on coming up with new ideas and figuring out new ways of doing things that are not based on 20th, 20th century methods. Um, so we're kind of building on the 20th century into the 21st century and a lot of, and it's all about creativity. And, um, and, and there's a lot of layers to that onion that, that we're going to dig into. But you sort of get the feel that the economy is quickly becoming Amazon everything. I mean, whatever I want, <laughs> yes. I'm going to go online, order it from Amazon. And is the creative economy, is the talk about that, and I think Madison has a maker fair coming up. We do, Where yes. there's all sorts of everything from, from arts to inventions to... Building things with fire and um, stilt walking and, yes, Basically. people making things, people coming up with ideas and making them. And it's both the experience of making stuff and then in terms of an event the experience of watching people make that and participating in it it's it's basically like my teenage years without breaking my mother's dishes um without blowing things up right in well oh, come blowing on. things up in a controlled, in, limitations in a controlled on environment <laughs> i guess i'll say that to get back to the economy, um, I heard uh, a, uh, an economist on public radio say that the U.S. economy seems to reinvent itself every 60 years or so. So end of the war to 2008, that's about 60 years. And so the old economy is there, the 20th century economy, it's manufacturing and agriculture, and Wisconsin and the United States were, have been very good at that. And we're kind of holding on to that for dear life because we know it and our systems are built on that. Sure. But the new economy, the 21st century economy, is much more about small business, about entrepreneurship, about creativity. And we're, we're kind of looking at it. It's in the plant. We're kind of looking at it right now. It's a plastic plant, by the way. It's a plastic plant. plant. It's green. But it's about Made the... in Ryan. No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> about the environment. It's about quality of life. It's about educating our kids to be... Um, self-directed and come up with new ideas and um, not have a job for 30 years necessarily the way that our generations did. And so um, the great thing, uh, so it's a little scary, I think, mm -hmm. because we're kind of, we, are, we are sort of building it as we, as we do it. But the great thing for Wisconsin is that we have so many assets. We have so many creative people, wonderful communities doing uh, amazingly creative things and creative ideas. And in a world that is more and more like Starbucks and Walmart, that authentic, unique quality that Wisconsin has is actually a part of our economic um, system, and, and we really should make the most of it. So is this a small town thing? Yes, and it's a big city thing too. Um, you know, it, it would be um, easy to say that it's happening in Madison and Milwaukee and Green Bay because the big cities are where lots of people are and they, they come up with new ideas. Um, 
but or and the good thing for Wisconsin because we have such a rural character is that our small towns are hubs of creativity. So we were talking about um, fab labs before mm -hmm. and in Eagle River and in Three Lakes and a lot of other places around the state, small towns, there are these um, hubs of technology in rural high schools. And so if you're a kid at the Northland Pines High School in, in Eagle River, you can go into a fab lab and you can make things with a 3D printer. You can come up with uh, amazing computer things. And you can do that in your rural school district. And so um, creativity is as important in our small towns and rural areas as it is in the cities. So you're the executive director of Arts Wisconsin. Um, First of all, why are you doing this? Why are you running around promoting this? Can you think of anything else to do I, on a, a gray day? What I can't is think of anything else more interesting to do, that's for sure. Um, I have a background in the arts. My, I've been in the arts my whole life. I mm -hmm. was going to be a big Broadway star. I was a theater major in college. I've heard you sing. Well, and I do love to sing, and I hope I get, I'm always looking for chances to do that. Um, so I've, I've always been a performer, and I've always been in the arts, and Along my life journey, I, I grew up in New York and I ended up in Wisconsin, uh, I discovered that the whole idea of community and working with people and caring about people and helping people realize their goals was actually something that really suited me and is really fun. And so Arts Wisconsin is the state's community cultural development organization. We help people, organizations, businesses, and communities figure out how to harness that creativity, really harness it and let it fly. So ha have it benefit the community, have it benefit the people in the community. Um, and I have the privilege of being able to travel around the state in every corner of the state, and I've pretty much been everywhere, just like you have. You've been to Wabino. <laughs> I have been to Wabino. That is the place we keep talking about. But I, especially not as a um, someone who came to Wisconsin and didn't know anything about it when I came here, I really appreciate the amazing uh, create, creativity and the the progressive and the interesting qualities, including weird, you know, the weird things about Wisconsin that I get to help with. And so um, I'm a big fan of Wisconsin, and I. Um, I really enjoy going out into the into communities and seeing what people are doing and trying to help them. All right, let's let's kind of get off the script here. <laughs> you you grew up in New York. You, you're you're a Broadway person. You're, yes. You're very East Coasty. I grew up in Northern Wisconsin, about forty miles from Wabino. Near Wabino. <laughs> <laughs> Near Wabino. A suburb of Wabino. <laughs> <laughs> Crivets would be offended. That's right. But. Um, are we, don't you find Wisconsin rube-ish? No. Backwoods-ish? Uh, speaking as someone who grew up in the suburbs of New York City and did not, not only did not know anything about Wisconsin, but didn't care because right. it wasn't a place that was on my radar screen. You couldn't say see it over Lake Michigan. It, it was like, where, I didn't even think about Lake Michigan. <laughs> and now I'm married to a man from South Dakota. How did that happen? <laughs> I would say that people in New York can be as provincial as anywhere else because there's that there's that map where the world ends at the Hudson River, you mm -hmm. know, and that was me and my family. Um, I I would say that Wisconsin is a real place, um, uh, and there are places there we have. We have world-class institutions in big cities, and we have world-class institutions in small towns, and amazingly creative people throughout. Mm -hmm. And so I would never, uh, so I would, I'm a huge fan, as mm -hmm. I said. I'm a huge fan of Wisconsin, and I think that more people need to know about how wonderful Wisconsin is. Well, and I, I I hope you understand. No, no, I mean, no, no. I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't want to. That's Anne. I don't want to say. Snob. Oh no, it's not rubbish at all. I mean, it's, it's a real place. I've really learned about community in Wisconsin. Um, I live in Madison, so I live in the city, but I've lived on the same street in three different houses over the last thirty years. I really, <laughs> really know my community, and I, I have seen how community works and doesn't work mm -hmm. in places around Wisconsin. I'm completely fascinated by human nature, and I've learned a lot about personalities and politics and how that dictates everything in a community, including the arts. Um, so I, I really, as I said, feel very privileged to be traveling around the state and doing lots of stuff. How long have you lived here? Since 1984, okay. and I've been doing this job since 1995. Okay.
Now you're also on the Downtown Action Council. Right. So, I mean, the, the connection there is pretty obvious. We're taping this, I should say, in Stoughton. A beautiful downtown. Yeah. And that's kind of another, it's almost an art in itself, isn't it? The well, downtowns. As we were driving into town, we saw the banners that said Stoughton Arts and Entertainment District. So Stoughton has a thriving downtown, and they're trying to ex they're extending the brand, if you will. They're extending the idea that this is a place where creativity flourishes. So the Stoughton Opera House is a, a hub of activity and has really contributed a lot to making uh, things happen in the in the in the community. It's a Main Street community. There's things like Sto uh, Setnamai which are all about bringing the community together and celebrating the heritage. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, you know, I, I, downtowns are the hub of the hubs of our communities, even though, I mean, I grew up in the suburbs, even though the suburbs are out there. Um, but people want to have things to do. They want to live in a place where there's um, public art, where there are murals and public art, where there's a theater that they can go to, where there are bike paths and things to do on water. And so um, Stoughton is one really good example of that. And they, they're, they're, very, they're working very hard on making sure it continues. And we could name 100 other places that have the same kind of aspect. And this program is put on by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. We're the cities, we're the villages. You know, we haul the trash, we plow the snow, we, you know, we call the ambulance. We support the arts. Well, uh, that was going to be my question is, what's this to us? This is, you know, it's not high on our totem pole. Uh, but it's, but it's intrinsic. It's everywhere. It's, it's essential to the, the health and well-being of the people in the community. And so I really appreciate our partnerships because it shows, because you are showing that not only is a city charged with keeping people safe and taking out the garbage and, um, and all the other, clearing the snow off mm -hmm. the, the streets. But it's also, char it is also a responsibility uh, that m many, most cities uh, care about and the league cares about in terms of what's the quality of life for the people in the city? How do get people get to participate? Um, how does our community look? Is there public art? Are there bike paths? Are there gardens and parks? Uh, are there things for people to do? And I, so I, I think in Wisconsin and many other places, um, uh, a municipality cares about the health and well-being of its citizens and its residents, including quality of life in the arts. My guest is Ann Katz, the executive director of the Wisconsin Arts Board. We got started... Arts Wisconsin. Arts Wisconsin, excuse me. My guest is still Ann Katz. <laughs> she may not appear on camera again. But um, <laughs> in uh, this month's issue of the municipality, uh, first of all, it's it's all color, oh, and it's we talk great. about murals. It is so wonderful. And, and there's this beautiful picture here. I'm going to show it right there. Ann Katz wrote a great article about arts and the community and Wisconsin's future, a lot of the things we've talked about so far. But you also sort of lay out this, I won't call it an <clears throat> eight-point plan, but oh, I will it, call it an eight-point plan. You will call Why it not? an eight-point <laughs> Did you send it to the president? No, I still. <laughs> Let's not go down that path. We're having a good time. Let's talk about <laughs> the goose right. that was in the middle of the road today. That's right. We had to wait for a goose. But in this article, and, and it gets to my question, which is what does a community do if they don't really feel like they've got anything going on? What, what's, what do we do? What's well, steps one through eight? First of all, every community has something going on. And there are creative people and creative things going on in any community. It, it just may not be as obvious. And so part of mm -hmm. what we do is that planning and that assistance to help people figure out what is there and how to build on it. Uh, I get a lot of mayors and city council people and economic development people calling me and saying, well, how do we do that creative economy stuff? You know, <laughs> can we do it now? Can we do it fast? Does it cost any money? Can we, do we don't want to change anything. <laughs> That'll and, work. <laughs> yeah, well, it's progress, process. It's all about process. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell people how to do it because every community has to figure out what its unique assets are and build on them. But these, this eight-point plan <laughs> is, a, is a, are a bunch of strategies that people can think about and work on. And I, I have to really emphasize the long-term nature of this. Like any development plan or like any development effort, you, you start it out, you finish one stage of it, and then you have to keep going. For example, it's, 
it's one thing to open an art center, and a lot of communities are, are building art centers and renovating buildings to be art centers, and there's this, I mean, in big cities, small towns, there's an explosion of art centers around the state that's really exciting because there's, it gives people more opportunities to participate in the arts. But you can open the, up the art center, and then you have to keep the art center going. You can't just, you have to get someone to, who's going to clean the bathrooms. You have to sell the tickets. You have to, um, you know, book the season. And so it's like having a park and maintaining it. You have to make sure you, you, you care and, and care for and feed it. And so um, I think that the, the strategies include um, thinking about how the entire community gets to participate, because that's a really important thing. It's, um, we talk about attracting the creative class to our communities, and we want people with money, we want people um, you know, with laptops and good ideas. We want everybody to participate. Sure. A, a community is not um, world class unless everyone gets to participate. And so one of the strategies is, is how to make sure that everyone gets to be part of the development that is moving forward. Um, thinking and in inventorying, inventorying, I can't even say that word. A lot of um, syllables. I know, in it's that. way too many. The assets. Arts is a much simpler <laughs> word. We like so, arts. Making, <laughs> making a list of what you already have. Because people will say, well, we need this. Well, it turns out you actually have that in your community, but nobody knows about it. And you're, so even just inventorying what a community has and then figuring out where the linkages are mm -hmm. and how to build on those linkages, that's another strategy. Um, making sure that there's investment in, in education, in the arts and education, because we, the arts are a critical component of 21st century learning. So because bring the bring the school district into the conversation. Make sure that every partner in the in the uh, in the community is involved. So um, municipalities, villages, and town and cities work together. They work with their communities, mm -hmm. and so developing a plan for the arts is not anything different than that. Um, we're to, to give an example. We're working with Wapaka now. Um, the city is leading on a cultural plan bless their hearts, mm -hmm. and uh, they're putting time, money, and resources into helping develop a, a plan to use the creative assets that they have. Um, Wanakee has something called the Creative Economy Initiative, and it's a program within the village where that they have designated tax dollars to, which I really am impressed by, that looks at the creative assets and builds on them. So they've got a public art program in the downtown. Mm -hmm. They've done pop-up galleries with artists. They've involved the school district because they have a wonderful arts program at the school and they want to make sure that the community gets to benefit. Um, the, the manufacturing businesses are participating because they want to encourage creativity. So um, those are only two examples. You know, there are many, many other examples of communities that are focusing. It's focusing. Like any development strategy, you have to put time and energy into it. Um, the great thing is, is that it usually is a lot of fun because mm -hmm. you're talking about the arts, and it's from the ground up. People want to be involved in something that will make their community better. It doesn't matter what political party you are in. It doesn't matter where you live. Everybody cares about their community, and so it's it, municipalities are. Um, I see a lot of municipalities working on bringing people together to think to say. What do we have here? How can we make jobs and quality of life and good education out of that and plowing ahead? In a couple of years ago, I was at a oh a meeting up in Wausau, and I oh, gentleman from the UW Marathon Center made this great statement about community history and how you should never, never forget where you came from because that's part of where you are. And the way he put it was always remember your saga. That every Ooh, community has a that's yeah, it's great. A great. It's almost as good as arts. <laughs> saga. Remember your saga, and I guess the question that that leads to is, you know, do do you is history is historic downtown? Does that have to be part of it? I mean, well, again, it's 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 part. It's a it's where it's where communities spring from, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, Stoughton or any Madison or Milwaukee or any they they start with a little settlement and that's where that's where the rest of the community springs from and so that's going to be one of the most historic parts of your community it's going to have older buildings it's going to have um, it's going to have history embedded in the sidewalks you know this is where this happened in 1942 or something like that um, and so especially since I'm a member of the downtown action council I am you know I love downtowns mm -hmm. uh, 
but I see that communities, that municipalities are focused on, you know, what's the history of our town? Where did this start? It started right here, right next to the river where they started the settlement or uh, where they built the first um, grocery store or whatever. Let's, you know, that's where we'll start the walking tour. That's where we'll have a, a mural. There are a lot of historical murals uh, around mm -hmm. uh, around Wisconsin. Um, in you know, let's see, in Portage, uh, not in Portage, in Plymouth. Excuse me, I think there's some in Portage, but in Plymouth and in Ladysmith, those are two places I can think of. They've got and Ashland. They've got historical murals that have oh, been beautiful. Oh yeah, that have been done by um, local artists and by uh, outside groups, and mm -hmm. so they're. It's it's very it's not only um, decorative it's educational because people I love that kind of stuff you know you're walking along the street and you see a plaque or a mural and it says this is where the first something something happened and that just gives you a better sense of the community and that's what the arts and creativity are all about and this is a good opportunity to mention Creative Economy Week Jerry <laughs> let's do that uh, so, well okay Ann. well one of our <laughs> what one can of, I tell you but wait let, a minute let me talk about this. <laughs> One of the great um, things that we've done together as partners is Creative Creative Economy Week, and this mm -hmm. is the second the second time we've done it. So it's a promotional campaign. It's an educational opportunity. Um, basically, we're celebrating creativity in Wisconsin's cities and villages. Um, we're getting proclamations from cities and villages. They proclaim Creative Economy Week. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're focusing on public art this year with murals, um, because as we just have been saying, there are so many places that have murals in the downtowns. So it's May 13th through the 20th. Okay. Um, as it happens, May 13th is also the statewide downtown open house, so that's a nice way to kick it off. And so um, we're gonna be sort of, we, we've got a Facebook page, we've got an Instagram account, um, we're gonna do press releases and maybe a press conference if we can get that, that together. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully some radio interviews. And so it's going to be a great moment in time to celebrate the fact that Wisconsin has um, a thriving creative economy in many ways, and there's sort of nowhere to go but up. Well, and okay, you started this last year. What, um, first of all, what was the reception? Were a lot of communities throughout Wisconsin involved in it oh, last year? absolutely. We got, um, I can't remember how many, but we got a number of proclamations, and we're kind of generating those right now. So I've got to put my plug in that any municipality watching this, let's have those proclamations. And, and I should say that a draft of the proclamation is on the league's website. Right, and so we make it very easy for people to do. They, don't, they just take the template and plug in the words. Um, we focused on poetry last year. And so we had Wisconsin poets um, providing there was their poetry. Some cool oh, poems. We ran we, those in the magazine, right? And we had we had them online, and we had kids, we had old people, we had we had a, a wonderful selection of poetry um, that people gave to us. Um, uh, we had radio interviews. Um, we did all sorts of things online. And so we got a great response. Mm -hmm. um, I have to mention Eau Claire, because last year and this year they're planning, they, they went crazy, they're going crazy with it. They basically, they took anything that's happening in the arts in Eau Claire that week and they're putting it together and making, they made a poster, they're doing um, events and receptions. Um, the proclamation, so uh, play, I mean, that's one example of a community that's letting their imagination run wild. Just uh, but tons of communities are doing proclamations and we're featuring all this public art, all these murals in the magazine, online. So it's, a, it's just a great way to really show that Wisconsin is a very creative place. Okay, and you, you also mentioned that during Creative Economy Week, we also have the downtown open house. Can, so can you kind of detour um, and tell me what that is? So the Wisconsin Department of um, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and the Wisconsin Downtown Action Council and Arts Wisconsin and lots of other partners, Wisconsin Arts Board. Um, it's a day at, in communities around the state, mm -hmm. and I don't even know how many, but there are a lot. There are probably 50 communities that are participating. From 10 to 4, uh, there's an, like an open house. So people can go downtown and there will be art exhibits and performances, and there will be special things happening in stores around downtowns. Um, it's just a, it's a really great way for people to explore their downtowns or another community 
another community downtown um, and see what it has to offer. And so um, WEDC is leading it. The, the Downtown Action Council is working on it. So it's a, again, we have a lot to celebrate in this state. And so it's a great way to celebrate what's happening. We're, we're kind of coming, coming full circle to, to where this conversation started. This notion that as the economy gets bigger and global and computerized, you know, you, you can order everything. You don't ever have to leave your computer. Right. You never have to leave your computer. You can stay in your jammies all day, which oh is, I find really appealing. Especially given the weather right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anne's got some real weather issues. I um, the sun. But, but it seems to me, at the same time, it's like there's a reaction to that. Uh, our communities are all reporting a lot of growth downtown, a mm -hmm. lot of interest in living downtown, being downtown, doing things downtown. Are, are we sort of saying, okay, that part of our lives is getting really, really big, so I want a part of my life to be so really, we want really... Some real, we want some real things happening. Yeah, I want to eat real food. I want to eat I at want, a real restaurant. Right, local food, local art. You know, humans have been expressing themselves creatively since the beginning of time, right? So you can't stop that creative spark. Uh, there are many people who, who, who are artists, who call themselves artists, but everybody is creative in some way. And so there's this basic human need to uh, to be creative and to figure out what means something what what means something to you and so um, coming into going to a downtown and experiencing real real art or um, you know seeing your neighbors coming together in a festival or a music ex or a, uh, a musical experience or an art experience people are hungry for that sometimes you can't even put it into words uh, but people are hungry for that kind of experience mm -hmm. and that kind of not only a community experience, but a personal experience. That's why there's so much interest in these maker fairs and these things like fab labs and studio tours where you can see artists actually making art. I find, I'm not a visual artist at all, but I, I find the process of making art completely fascinating. Fascinating. I think, how did you come up with that idea? <laughs> I don't even, how did you do that? That was a block of wood. <laughs> I, I, that was a piece of, you know, melted glass, and now it's this beautiful vase. I, I love watching that stuff. People love watching that stuff. And then people think, oh, I could try that. I could make a stained glass, whatever, or I could sing in a choir. It's just human nature. And so, um, having the experiences like Creative Economy Week, like the Downtown Open House, like all of the creative and artistic things that we have in this state, that's what people want. Uh, no, mm -hmm. There's nothing that replaces actual human connection. Just as wonderful as the internet is and as great as it is to order things on Amazon, there is nothing that replaces actually being with other people and having those experiences. And so that's what the creative economy, that's what creativity is all about. And I think we're, we're running short of time, but <clears throat> before I, I get away from this, Kind of a last question: Is there a way to? Is there somehow you could screw this up? <laughs> what should a city stay the away from? The economy, or <laughs> yeah, let's, well, let's not get into the whole economy. But. Personalities and politics <laughs> are going to dictate what happens. I, you know, I think um, focusing on the great, on the common good. Mm -hmm. um, people, you know, people will say, "Well, I want this." Well, but what's the bigger picture here? Um, and people can get diverted by those personalities and politics, and then there's global trends happening that you can't, that you feel like you can't control. Uh, I think, uh, so that, those are things to pay attention to right. um, in any development process, but I also think that keeping at it, you know, it's like you say to your kids, well, that didn't work, try it again, right. honey. Right. A lot of times you're, you're developing a program from scratch, or you're, you're, you're building an art center, or you're putting on a, a new exhibit, or a new something in your community, and it, it doesn't go the way you think it should the first time. The best advice I can give is to try to figure out what did work in that experience and then build on that mm -hmm. because um, any, uh, anything worth doing um, is hard. And we're talking about long-term sustainable development here. We're talking about not just, oh, let's build a factory and we'll get 500 jobs and isn't that great. We're talking about giving people the potential to succeed at the local level and that's uh, that's a process that doesn't end.
Yeah. And so persistence, persistence and patience. Stick to it. Right, absolutely. Well, I, I knew this conversation was going to be fun, and Thank it has been. Thank you for the been. opportunity. Thank you, I Anne. appreciate it. So, Ann Katz, Executive Director of Arts Wisconsin, with us on The Local Perspective today. Before I sign off, I want to thank Ben and Derek and the team at WSTO Television for your help today. Also want to thank Wisconsin Community Media for making this possible. So, pass the resolution, get out there, try something, put a mural up on your wall, anything, do something. Participate in the arts. Participate in the arts. Have a great day.